Yes, it is out. Hello and welcome once again to episode 4 of our Audi TT Mark III Rebuild. I'm Peter, your host, and I will be guiding you through this chaos over here for the fourth time in a row. You saw me last time trying to disassemble the engine and take it out of the car. This time around there is plenty of things we didn't think through all the way. So let me explain. For example, there's this gear linkage cable that goes from this one, that goes from the gear shifter all the way to the gearbox. That needs to be removed. There is also this fuel line, which is either a fuel supply or fuel return line. I think this one is a supply, which has a connection over here, but I cannot get it out, so I need to find a way to make those two separate. Also, and you probably cannot tell where it is, it's over here. This is where the prop shafts are at. So they supply power from the, end, from the gearbox to the front wheels and we need to remove them as well in order to get the engine out. What I also need to do is remove as much of these hoses and everything else that is broken as the engine is still here because it's going to make removing the engine much easier because I don't have to be extra mindful of everything that sticks out. Last of the things that are on top of my head is exhaust pipe. We need to unscrew it from the turbine and separate those two. And what is also most probable, I will have to raise the car a bit more into the air in order to get to all of those pieces from underneath. Because as it sits right now, it's not going to be really accessible. So the plan is following. I'm going to start with the small things because I have a saying if you are stuck somewhere in life or don't know what to do at something project or anything else I like to start with cleaning up I like to to make everything as clean as possible and through this process of cleaning it also in most cases reveals what the next logical step is so I'm going to go ahead start with the wheel arches brakes all of those pipes that I showed you earlier and then it's going to open up most probably a logical way to do the next step and of course remove the engine. Well that was definitely fun. I got all four of them out and only the left hand side is slightly damaged even though I think if you talk really nicely to it maybe buy it a drink or something it can be put together somewhat not all the way yeah anyways I did just like I told you to do put every single screw in a bag a zip bag labeled it so now I know in hopefully a month or two better try a year or two uh, when I put this thing back together it's going to be much easier those four wheel liners are definitely going to go through a wash proper wash but for now I'm going to leave them on the side and next thing I would love to attack is the wing on this side or the fender and then underneath the fender there is a bottle that holds the washer fluid for the windshield that needs to go out as well and then we will have a much nicer view of everything that's damaged on the suspension and then we are going to proceed removing the brakes let's go Just in case you're wondering what I'm dealing with for the last hour, I don't know if you can see it. Let me check. 
there it is. This bad boy over here is the last bolt we need to remove the whole fender out. And I've been doing that for the last hour. So I'm going to go ahead use some more tools, some more drill bits or whatnot. And then I'm going to continue filming once I get this piece of metal out. If you're wondering if it really had to come to this, yes. It's been more than an hour and I've tried every single tool that I have. So now it is the one tool I should have taken from the beginning. In the bin, bin, beginning, 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 ouch. Yeah, make sure to scratch everything else. Oh, maybe not. Maybe we are going to be able to get this piece of aluminium <laughs> out. Ouch. Ah. Let me know. Yes. Yes. Ha. Ha. One and a half hours later. I cannot believe. That's why you cannot plan anything when building car. I have a feeling I don't want to touch any other car for next 10 years. Just how much effort it took to get this piece off and just how much damage they did in the meantime. Incredible. At first I was like, I'm going to try to save the wing because it is only damaged right here. So yeah, it's expensive wing. So I thought maybe we can save it. No, no chance. If you're interested. If you're interested in a souvenir, it comes with a tool to get the screws out. Works really well, obviously. One and a half hour. And this is why you cannot plan anything. You cannot plan on filming stuff because it takes you an hour and a half to take one wing off, the one that is good, and the one that was damaged, we took off in like five minutes. So I'm going to make a five minute break and then I'm going to continue working either on the brakes or on the front of the car. We'll see. These are some interesting bits and pieces I wanted to show you. And first, I got a really, Let's see, yeah, oh yeah, that's it. I got this cheap tool and it had only a small notch in the middle. So you can either use this, and I use the angle grinder to put this nice hole in it, so I can use it as a trim removal tool, or you can use a flathead screwdriver and just grind uh, the slit in the middle, just like this, and you'll get the tool. This is something, okay. But this, this is even more interesting. You know, we have this fuel supply line that we cannot get out because there are two pins that you need to put, push inwards at the same time. And of course, there are a fuel line pliers that you can order online or buy at a car tool store. And it costs, I don't know, it's a bit expensive. So what I did is I bought this uh, I think they're called nail clippers, so norm normal pliers that are used to cut wire or nails or stuff like that. And then I used an uh, angle grinder again. Let me zoom in. I used an angle grinder again. Come on. Focus, focus. There it is. No? Still no? Anyways, yeah? You see now? Come on. Come on. Focus, focus. There you go. So I used an angle grinder to cut the pliers. So all that's left are two small fingers in the middle. And what they do now is exactly what we need them to do. To push the pins on the both sides at the same time. Sometimes you gotta be clever. 
So this is what I meant. We are going to use these and just clip them into the holes and then we can squeeze that. I don't think this is going to work now because I think this fuel line is damaged so I cannot basically get this thing out. But this is how it's supposed to be working. This is what it's meant to do. We have to find another solution for that. Until I don't find a solution for this fuel line up front, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the brakes. First thing is I'm going to use a wire and most probably a 9 volt battery. Hopefully this is going to work to release the motor that holds the electronic parking brake and this is not something you should do unless you don't have any other option, which I don't. So um, I'm going to go ahead start to work start working on that. Let's go. The amount of tools needed to remove the brakes is, especially if you don't have a lift, so everything is like tight and you cannot reach all of the screws from underneath. Nevertheless, I have removed the rear calipers, so now I'm going to go do the fronts as well. And I couldn't remove the caliper carriers because the screws are just way too tight for me. I think I might need a friend uh, who is somewhat better at persuading those screws to come out than I am. But yeah, going to the front and then we'll see just how much energy I have left for front of the engine. Let's go. If it wasn't obvious enough, this is the front brake. Looks like it has been built in 1901, since the amount of rust on it is incredible. I don't know how, how you can accumulate that much rust in such a little time. Anyways, let me just quickly zoom in and show you something. Where is my, yeah, there it is. Look at what I have found. I have found a... Uh, no! Uh -huh. All right. A steel ball. <laughs> so the CV joint is completely torn apart. Hence all of the fat all around. So that's why everything is so greasy. Also, the lower control arm has taken quite a artistic twist, you could say. So that's why I, even though I have already um, removed the steering knuckle, I still cannot move this thing. I, can, I, I still cannot steer with this thing left or right. So there is something else holding it in place. I have undone all of those three screws down there, but it is under so much tension that I cannot simply just yank it out. Also, all of the, all of the wheel bearings are very rusty, so I think I will be replacing all four of them, which is a expensive tour, but it is what it is. Better safe than sorry. I still need to get this thing out somehow. I don't know how, because like I said, all of the screws are, are already out. But in order to pull this thing out, I need to undo the lower control pushing, ball joint, 
however you like to call it. So that's my task next. Also, I have removed all of the steering, all of the brake calipers and everything so that we will be refurbishing in a laboratory video. Stay tuned for that. Until then, um, I'll see what I can do with this. So yeah, this is the part where I didn't realize my microphone was dead and I was trying to, to show you that the CV joint is ripped out. So you can see it right there, as well as the couple other things that are bent, like this control arm, like right here. So that's why we cannot remove the ball joint out of the knuckle. So yeah. I just couldn't re resist not taking a look at the engine like in the previous video microphone is dead so I was trying to explain that I removed the water pump that is actually belt driven and that is something here is the belt that is something that I've seen the first time and I didn't know that so yeah that it would have been re replaced anyways because it is the most common technical issue on these engines so I was happy that I have an opportunity to have a really easy access to remove and replace all of those. And here is the main reason why this car was written off by the insurance. As they saw that, they thought that the engine block or whatever is broken my opinion is that the engine just moved as the engine mount broke so it smashed into the subframe and caused this upper oil pan to snap which is a easy to replace part i've just realized that the couple of the last couple of videos didn't have audio as my microphone died so yeah i'm going to have to voice over that anyway Here I was taking the last couple of bolts out and here is the friend of mine who was helping me pull the engine out of the car since it was really heavy and then move all this contraption that we built in order to get the engine up in the air so I can work on the lower part of the engine freely. Welcome back. I know it's been a long time waiting and I really had to take some things behind the scenes because most of the stuff was taking much longer than expected and I didn't want to waste your time. This is episode three or four, not sure. So I just wanted to make some things done. There were a couple of screws that were giving me a headache um, the engine is out, as you've probably seen or are going to see from a little uh, time lapse that I did. I had the help of a friend who um, I couldn't just, I just couldn't do anything without him. He helped me get the engine out and move, move it away from the car so I can work on the engine separate from the car. Because 
Yes, there's a couple of things that we still need to take off of the car that I found out as soon as the engine was out. So I'm just going to walk you through the process of what is left to do on the car now, what the plan is for the whole build. And of course, I'm going to show you everything new that we found that's broken. So let's go. So I'm going to start with this. Um, this is a subframe and it's made out of aluminium. I hope I've said that correctly. I found the crack. It is a really tiny hair, hair crack or there is a special name for it. So it's a really tiny crack, but it goes all the way through. I, I'm going to try to film it. It's really hard to see. Maybe we'll manage that. So that means that we need a new subframe. That means that the old one has to go out. There is four bolts to get this thing out. And I think I'm going to do that today. Still, we have one bolt that is broken. And of course, the piece was stuck in the chassis. But the thing is, I'm not sure whether this part of the chassis is going to have to be replaced anyways. So I'm not going to try to pull this screw out yet until we find out whether it could just stay in there and we are going to remove the whole part of the car anyways. To get uh, this part that needs to be done by the body shop free, we need to remove the ASB pump. So basically anything that's in this area has to go. I'm going to have to remove this as well. I'm going to free up as much space as possible. This was the thing that was giving us headaches last time. Those three bolts that go from the behind that secure this prop shaft or drive shaft. I still haven't Googled which one is the right one um, to the gearbox. So now that we got that out, there was this cable for the oil, oil level sensor that I have forgot. Luckily, we didn't pull too hard, so the cable is fine. And then, then the third engine mount from underneath. Once I've undone that, the engine was free to go out. Also, as you can probably tell by the lack of the things in here. I have removed the whole knuckle and everything that was attached to it. So the wheel bearing is out. Steering arm looks okay, so I won't be replacing any of those. On both sides, <coughs> sorry. Um, yeah, this was fun because, let me just get the part. There it is. <laughs> The control arm on MQB platform is a triangular control arm. There's nothing major about it. The exception for TT is that it's made out of aluminium and it bends. It bends, it, it's bent on both sides in my case. And this one was bent so hard that I couldn't remove the knuckle or anything else or even turn the car around, uh, the wheel around. So a friend of mine told me, why don't you just cut it? So this, that's exactly what I did. And this is how thick it is. So you can assume it took me some time to cut this thing off the car so I can remove the knuckle. I mean, this is junk anyways. I got a new one already, but I'm going to spray paint it because I don't like how aluminum rusts, not rusts, corrodes. So I just want to spray paint it so it stays nice and silver. Moving on. I knew filming this was going to be pain because it was so hard to see anyways, but I'm going to try my best. Pooh, I don't know if, I, if my finger is contrasty enough, but you can see right here, hopefully you can see right here, is where the crack is. So this is the hair crack or however the professional name for that is, this is where the thing has cracked. And this is why we have to change the whole subframe. And I just found a bolt right there sitting. Let me try to, no, I cannot do that. Let me try to grab a magnet. 
have to have the right tools. I'm not sure what a screw of that size is doing down there. I have a feeling it would cause a rattle and a half. Yep, if we would have to dry with it, not to mention it would probably be... Oh, nice! A banana screw! So you might be wondering what am I doing back in the interior of the car again? Yeah, I thought I was done here too. Then all of a sudden I realized, uh, yeah, I was re uh, getting the cabin air filter out when I realized, hey, wait, there is a crack in here. I don't know, maybe we should, maybe we should just digitally zoom in here. You can see this is the housing of the blower fan. I was like, okay, I will get this housing out and then I'll just going to repair it because it's just one simple crack. There's no parts missing. Then I realized this part goes all the way to the back and houses the heater core, the air conditioning heater or cooling core and a couple other, other things. Which means it is behind all this. So I could just leave it like that. It's not a big hole, but we don't do stuff like that. So I'm going to have to get everything out. And by everything, most probably this piece of framing or dashboard carrier, which however it's called, in order to get the complete air conditioning unit out because it is behind those metal framing pieces and then get everything out, strip everything apart whilst we are in there probably clean up everything, the heater core, flush the heater core, flush everything out so it's brand new, better than, better than brand new and fix this crack and put everything back in. Great! So one more thing that is probably worth mentioning before I start working on the car again. Uh, in order to get the subframe out, we need to disconnect the steering column. And I have struggled a bit to find where it is. There is a nice cute door over here in the south deadening that reveals, hopefully, let's see, does it reveal? Yes, it reveals the screw that we need to undo in order to separate the steering column from the steering rack in order to get the subframe out. So we need to do that bolt as well. And so in a typical YouTube fashion, I'm going to leave you with a cliffhanger this time by showing you just briefly everything that I found that is damaged on the engine itself. We can see here a nicely broken oil sump and upper oil sump, which is something really lovely. I think I showed you that already. But the good thing is the engine block isn't damaged. Also, we have a differential broken or final drive. I'm not sure what the exact name is, but as soon as you can stick your finger inside the differential, it's no good. Also, both of those CV joints are damaged. But that's okay because we can simply unscrew them and put the new ones on. And here there is nothing exceptional about this. I was just trying to remove every single trim piece, um, mounting and anything else that was stuck to the, this part of the chassis so we can have a clear image of everything that's damaged and so now I can make a recording and send it to the body shop so they can assess the damage and tell me the price of the repair.
Unfortunately, that is everything I can show you right now. So if you like this video, please subscribe, comment and like, share with your friends so they can also watch the video. Stay tuned because in the next episode we will be working on, on either the engine or the car as well. Um, thank you so much for watching. Until the next episode, see you, bye.